What is up everybody? And here we are. The end of 2014. Not the way I wanted to uh, end the year, but I'm coming down with a bit of a throat bug, so it looks like this is going to have to be it. Unless I want to sign off the radio series before this throat bug gets much worse. Eh, we'll figure it out. But anyways, it's the end of the year, and it's not the way I wanted to end 2014, but, you know, life happens. Now, it's not the way that I would have wanted to end the year, being under the weather and talking about one of the problems I've had on YouTube in recent months or recent years, etc. But, such is life. I want to talk about issues related to content ID fraud and false content ID flagging and give you folks a real good example of just what I'm talking about. Now, if we click around here, this is my latest copyright problem on YouTube. The Thanksgiving special, Moonkin Madness, from Play Some Stuff, years and years ago in 2008, has been flagged <laughs> all these years later. <laughs> this is a video that I accidentally retro-reeled, thinking I deleted it at some point, but I actually didn't, and I wound up deleting the retro-reel. Maybe I should have kept the retro-reel. But anyways, this was the this was the Thanksgiving special for Play Some Stuff from Season 1, I say, when I had that Van Halen sound-alike royalty-free stock music at the beginning. Eh, well, what do you know? That very same Van Halen sound-alike stock music is now giving me problems. And it's not the first time that stock music has given me problems. So, let's see. Your video may include content owned by a third party. Joe Athlete Calorie Crusher. Sound recording administered by The Orchard Music, which I have formally disputed, but they get to take it easy until the end of January to respond to it, and I'm going to be sending more information as well as this video to the folks at The Orchard's Dispute Resolution Group, which actually has an email address and stuff like that. I probably should have cleaned off the screen before recording this. Yikes. Anyways, uh, let's do some more wiping off the screen. All right. So Joe Athlete Calorie Crusher. Now those of you who have been involved in this stuff probably have, are already familiar with The Orchard. The Orchard, as well as companies like BFM Digital, are infamous for bogus or dubious content ID flags like this. The Orchard actually is a new name for a company that used to be known as IOTA. So if you've ever seen a content ID issue with IOTA, same, same group, it's just The Orchard now, which is a bit friendlier on the tongue. You know, IOTA sounds like... Apple trying to make a Yoda or something like that. All right, Iota. <laughs> Anyways, so after years and years of no problems on YouTube and uh, using royalty-free music, which, by the way, I own a commercial license to that Van Halen sound-alike track. When I first bought it, way back in 2007, remember that date for later, I deliberately spent more than I needed to to buy a professional license instead of the home license, which allowed for monetization. Because it was just a gesture on my part, because I, I like that track so much that I wanted to use it as a main opening theme for, for YouTube videos. So I purchased a professional license, which allows for monetization. Which, of course, if they were helping themselves, if I were monetizing this video, The Orchard would be helping, would be infringing upon my rights and helping themselves to whatever it was, something like that. But anyways, so if you actually go t go poke around and uh, look at the Orchard's write-ups on things, and their music distribution company, da-da-da, they manage rights, da-da-da, they actually have a blog entry just for YouTube copyright claims. So let's take a look at this here. <clears throat> If you've received a notice from YouTube that your video contains content owner licensed by The Orchard, da da da, please read. Please know that The Orchard does not intend to sue you and in most cases will not be removing your video. That's fine and dandy, but to the folks at The Orchard, who I will be sending this video to, the problem with the YouTube content ID system and the problem with YouTube copyright enforcement in general is that it's shoot first and ask questions later. And people accuse... It's basically like a 21st century witch hunt or something like that. If you ever read, like, The Crucible by Arthur Miller and stuff like that, and as an allegory to the 1950s commie trials and stuff like that involving Joe McCarthy and stuff like that, one of the things you run into is that people are guilty until proven innocent, which is the opposite of how it usually goes. Usually the accuser has to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. But not on the internet. Not in the wild, wild west of our laws not being totally caught up with the technology, unlike other areas or something along those lines. So, it's nice that the, that the orchard would just monetize videos. However, the problem with monetization 
and content ID like issues like this. And of course, the claim isn't correct. The Joe Athlete calorie crusher thing is not is a bogus claim, which we'll get into later on. But the problem with this whole content ID thing is that it gives the accuser, or should I say, whoever has access to the accuser's content ID account, the power of death, as we call it. Sure, content owners that use content ID are able to determine the policies of what to do when their, when their content is matched, but if they can change it after the fact, they can red button videos all across YouTube. Now, I don't expect the orchard who makes their money off enforcing rights and stuff like that to want to diminish their business by doing that. I don't expect the orchard to do that. However, what if their account gets hacked? What if someone spoofs them? You know, what? I mean, identity theft is a thing these days. What if someone busts into their account and then changes the policies to copyright strike everybody whose video is claimed by the orchard. Through no fault of this company's own, they are now going to get the finger, as if they don't have enough fingers pointing at them already, the orchard and BFM are infamous for content ID issues among YouTubers, but they'll have the, they'll have the finger pointed at them even more if something like that were to happen. And don't say it can't happen. Somebody, either Sega of Japan or somebody going around as, going around claiming to be Sega of Japan was able to get all kinds of videos copyright struck and accounts banned that were showing Shining Force footage during the Shining Force scandals a year or two ago. So don't say it can't happen. That is why the system is fundamentally flawed and needs to be changed, and the Orchard, among other companies involved in this stuff, should not be contributing to this problem. Now let's go back to the Joe Athlete calorie crusher thing mentioned earlier. If you search for Joe Athlete, you get goose egg for results. Joe Green, Joe Falcon, St. Joseph's University, da 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 da, goose egg. If you search for calorie crusher, you get goose egg for results. Oh, oh look, calorie crusher full body workout. Actually, this doesn't use that, that music track. The Savage Calorie Crusher, da 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 da, LA Fitness, etc., Calorie Crusher classes, etc. So, where is this song? Who is this Joe Athlete? Who is this music artist that I'm allegedly infringing upon the rights of? Right here on this German website, if you do enough digging and you search for literally Joe Athlete hyphen calorie crusher in quotation marks, you finally get over to this German website, wimp.de, and boom, there it is. There it is. Calorie crusher, Joe Athlete, and it is the soundtrack that I used to use as my main, uh, that, that I used to use in my videos years ago. Copyright 2014 Hot Ideas Incorporated. Or should I, or maybe not copyright, but 2014 Hot, that name sounds familiar. Hot Ideas Incorporated. Oh, shoot, son. That, that rings a bell. Because back when I had a similar issue with BFM Digital and had to contact their CEO to get that false claim removed from the video, which was another stock music, stock track issue that I had earlier with another royalty-free track getting claimed by another party, it was this album, which is still available on iTunes. Great, scary Halloween music. I believe the track was Up the Castle Steps Horror. The same, it was the exact same music track as a royalty-free smart soundtrack that I actually purchased a license for. This thing's still available on iTunes. Let me guess, there is no, let me guess, there is no physical version of this available. Why, you might ask? Well, I think I figured out why exactly Hot Ideas is able to claim copyright on royalty-free tracks like this. Now, Joe Athlete Calorie Crusher. Yeah, sure, whatever. Here's the real name of the track. Still available for purchase. Leap of Faith, composed by Rick Rhodes. Available from the Smart Sound Library off a royalty-free music album called Full Throttle. Years and years ago, I paid $15 for a commercial license which allowed monetization. Nowadays, you would spend $40 per track to buy this Van Halen sound alike. So, and I think it's playing too, which is why I muted, which is why I muted the audio before recording this. So, anyways, you here's the problem, and this is why smart smart sound should chase after people that are that are doing this copyright fraud on YouTube and claiming royalty-free music like this after the fact. 
So here's the here's here's how this ha here's how this works. If we click commercial license, which I have right here, which I have here in another tab, Smart Sounds commercial license is one of the most generous and hassle-free, royalty-free music licenses in the industry. You only need to contact us if you need to manufacture more than 10,000 units of physical media. So the obvious loophole with this license here is you don't have to pay royalties, just sell it digitally. Hey, what do you know? We, hey, what do you know? Good luck finding a physical copy of great, scary Halloween music or Joe Athlete Calorie Crusher. By the way, if you click Joe Athlete to see, oh, whatever song, what other songs been made by this guy, you just get Joe Athlete football, basketball music. And where is Calorie Cruncher? God, where's Calorie Crusher? Anywhere on this list. None of these tracks are on here. Funny how that works. I think the real culprit here is this Hot Ideas Company. Just like it was last time with BFM, they were claiming copyright 2013 Hot Ideas when I actually purchased a license for that track years and years earlier, even more so with this. And I, have, and I actually got a commercial license because I was going to use it as a main theme. Glad I don't have much of those videos left now that they're getting flagged like this. <sighs> right. So there's the loophole that causes this to happen. And here's the problem. This is why Smart Sound needs to say something about this or amend that 10,000 units of physical media to include to include things like selling as in digital music albums too. If somebody wanted to use this today and get give Smart Sound some business, they would spend $40 just for one music track only to end up getting flagged anyways. You know, that's got to eventually start damaging Smart Sound's business. If they have a legal team, they should be doing something about this. Because this is total nonsense. I have had this music track since 2007. Obviously, if some company wants to resell royalty-free tracks and put their own name on them, like this company has done in both this incident and my previous incident with BFM Digital, the Orchard and BFM and these rights administration companies should go after these folks. And what this really says is that the burden of proof needs to be on the accuser. and should I, Or should I say, the burden of proof needs to be on the companies that are administering this stuff and sending stuff into Content ID like this. Now, I have formally disputed this because The Orchard is the first company to be a repeat offender with this kind of nonsense. I haven't had any problems with BFM since the issue involving that other stock track that got falsely claimed. However, when I went to file this formal dispute, I was threatened with termination of my account if I filed a false report. Now, if those kinds of threats can be extended to us, the victims of this nonsense, why can't those kinds of threats be extended to the people that are submitting files like this? Why can't the orchard be subject to the same amount, those, the, those same severe threats of termination and whatnot of their relationship with YouTube if something doesn't work right? That's the loophole that has created, obviously, an industry. These are the kinds of loopholes that have created both companies and an industry that's making money off of this, while people spending $40 for Rick Rhodes' song track here aren't able to use it on YouTube, the most popular Web 2.0 video site, because some other company can just take advantage of loopholes in the license and then register with a company like The Orchard or BFM and basically help themselves to other people's revenue and gain the power of death over all these videos that somebody spent money on a license for, which includes commercial use and monetization. <sighs> That's what needs to be fixed on YouTube. They have until January, but I will be sending both this video and a summary of what I've discussed about this to the Orchard's Dispute Resolution address. I applaud them for resolving my last issue with this exact same track within a matter of days. I, it's why I haven't really done the talk like a lawyer thing in my correspondence with them. Last time when I sent something to them, I was very stern and very strict, and I'm glad they responded very quickly within 72 hours. Because I know that they actually resolve stuff like this instead of bureaucratically dragging it out, I will be nice to them this time and I'll send them this video. But this is fundamentally what is wrong 
with YouTube's uh, content ID system here. It's way too easy to take advantage of. In this case, it's not technically the orchard that's in the wrong here, except they need to police who they service a lot better in order to not have situations like this Joe Athlete calorie crusher crap. When it's really Leap of Faith by Rick Rhodes. And this is the thing, too. Remember when the multi-channel networks were given the, or, you know, the, the, the boom was lowered on them? Remember when the multi-channel networks told, you better police your copyrights really well or you're not going to be a network with us? Remember when YouTube got on their case? Why can't they get on their case about companies like BFM and The Orchard? Anyways. I'm going to send this video as well as a synopsis of what I've talked about here to The Orchard's dispute resolution line, or to their dispute resolution email. I do hope, I do hope that this can be resolved amicably because I have half a mind to put the axe to two-thirds of my channel and get rid of everything that uses these stock tracks, because I'm sick and tired of having to pick up the... having to clean this crap up. And it's always on videos that are like five, six years old, too. Every single one of these incidents has been on videos that have been on this site for no problem whatsoever for years. And now suddenly, oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, shoot, what was that company's name again? Hot Ideas Incorporated is what doing whatever. Yeah, right. Well, this is why I have switched to the YouTube Audio Library as the sole source of music tracks for anything that I upload. It's cost, and uh, there's others that are doing this too. No doubt there are others that are doing this too, and it's costing companies like Smart Sound business, which makes me wonder when Smart Sound's going to say, hey, we got to do something about this. <sighs> right. I'm going to be sending this video and a synopsis of what I've talked about here to the dispute resolution email <coughs> at, at the orchard. I hope this can be resolved amicably, and I look forward eagerly to the days when fraudulent nonsense like this is a thing of the past. Once upon a time, there wasn't crap like this going on, but YouTube's easily abused systems have created this problem. It's only going to be a change to YouTube's abusable systems that solve it. Oh, I need a glass of water. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.